I really, I really, uh, I'm, re I'm really happy for the opportunity to do this. So, so that's my talk. So, thank you. You know what? Questions. Yeah. Well, he has I, a question. I, I have a question. What is this? <laughs> Slide rule. <laughs> okay. Do you, do you know how to use one? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bob, you told me an interesting story this afternoon during the tour that people might be interested in mm -hmm. hearing about your undergraduate research experience. So we got a lot of oh, undergraduates, yeah. and a lot of us old timers are interested in it because we knew the guy that you did your research. Yeah, for. yeah, oh, yes. yeah, yes. yeah. Uh, I um, I I got some some support through a National Science Foundation undergraduate participation program, and and with that, I did exploding wires with Basil Canute. Basil Canute, I'm not sure how to pronounce the first name, but uh, somewhere over there in Cardwell, uh, and Cardwell was the head of the department when I was here, but so, somewhere over there up in the lab, in a dark room, uh, we set up a, now oh, it's thing is about, oh, maybe that big by that big and that tall uh, structure with uh, heavy duty metal mesh around it, big capacitors. <laughs> and um, we did exploding wires. We'd, we'd put a wire in there, copper or something like that. We'd charge the capacitors, throw the switch, and pop. And on photographic plates, we'd record the spectrum. We'd see the lines. Then I would scan those with a densitometer. This is a, as an undergraduate, I'd scan those with the, with the densitometer so I get the line profiles. I would um, go over to the to the computer lab and spend hours between midnight and four in the morning or four in the morning eight in the morning, running a simple little Doppler uh, profile fitting uh, uh, Fortran program that I wrote to determine the the, the temperature of the wire. Uh, because of Doppler broadening. So I did that as an undergraduate. And um, I got a tetanus shot over here at the, at the health because when I got poked. But, but, uh, and, you know, but it, it, was, it was really, really exciting and I, you know, I learned a lot. So. Yeah. Yes? So two comments. One, with a, a high school physics teacher by the name of Ken Ohm, I don't know how you could resist. Because yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Ohm's law, yeah, it helped. <laughs> yeah. Uh, secondly, you had a very important message in the, the Hubble story and that had to do with the forensics aspects of mm -hmm. understanding the aberration in the yeah. original mirror. And I think part of the take-home message there, and maybe you can elaborate on this, is the value of keeping good notebooks. Yeah. For the students in the room, keeping good notebooks of what you've done, mm -hmm. so that when your experiment is circling the Earth at 26 miles, how how high was Hubble? 560 kilometers, and it comes down to 400 or so. But yeah. You know. um, so when your experiment's up mm -hmm. there, you have to fix it. Uh, you can only rely on your notebook to, uh, to help you figure out the solution and then your yeah. so. And and there's another message here too because. There, there was the reflective null corrector that they had calibrated. They really believed this sucker. They really believed that they, they knew what it was, but it had an error in it. There was another one called the refractive null corrector. The way they'd use these, they, you, you would double pass a laser light up to, to the mirror and back through this, and, and the, the, the null corrector, if, if the mirror was figured properly, you would see a null. So the, the fringes would go away and you'd see a null. Um, so there was also a refractive null corrector that they did not calibrate as well. I understand they were using it to get the radius curvature of the mirror, but it showed the error at the, at the right magnitude, the right sign. They ignored that data completely because they, didn't, because they weren't going to use it for that and they didn't believe it anyway, they hadn't calibrated it. When they, when they discovered the error in, 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 in orbit, they looked at that and said, oh, there it was, but they ignored it. They ignored it. <laughs> so don't ignore data 
<laughs> that, that contradicts your, 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 pre -con your, your preconceived notions. <laughs> yeah. Yes? Yeah. Um, when you send up the fixes for Hubble, yeah. you give them to people who obviously don't have a great deal of scientific background. They're wearing very funny suits mm -hmm. when they're trying to put mm -hmm. this stuff mm -hmm. in a very hostile environment. Mm -hmm. What sort of extra precautions did you have to make to make sure that things got in the right place and got set up as you wanted? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I, I want to come back to some. Yeah, well, they're in funny suits. They are. They are adventurers, I'll tell you. <laughs> John Grunsfeld, I saw him after the last servicing mission. He was an astronaut, and he, his arm was in a sling. And he said, well, he'd, he'd injured his arm before the mission, but he didn't tell him because he wanted to fly. <laughs> uh, they they, they uh, get very particular about sharp edges, about static control, um, their gaps for, put, for putting it in. Uh, they have a helper over here that uh, helps take tools in and out. I don't know if you can see that or not, but they just get very, very particular about those sorts of things. And um, they um, also um, um, practice. They spend thousands of hours in a swimming pool practicing. And, um, and they're very accomplished, really. They really, you know. But uh, so that you know, there are a lot of precautions on that, and so and and but the astronauts that put it in there, it's really very simple. They just have to get it in there without them being injured, and throw one one lever, and the it's designed then to clamp it in the, into the right place. So from that standpoint, it's simple. Uh, then they have to get the door shut. These the the first or so service animations, they open these doors, these doors right here, and uh, they had trouble getting them shut. This door right here, it's a big door. And um, I asked them once, well, were they sure they got it shut to keep the stray light out? Yeah, they were sure, so. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Uh, would you show that Hubble uh, extra deep field yeah. picture one more time? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think before I do that, I want to show a picture that I, that I skipped. This, but this was the picture of that galaxy oh, wow. before the correction. That's what it was after the correction. Yeah. This was the point spread function before CoStar. Light spread out, that's spherical aberration and scatter. That's what it is afterwards. That, that, I, I, I guess I skipped that. So OK, what, the, 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 Hubble, the Hubble deep field. The question was on the colors in that picture. Yeah. Those true colors. The reason I ask is that I would have expected the tiny dots to be redder, and they look blue. <laughs> well, I, I I think they're you know with, with, with these filters, I think they 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 try to make them to true color. Really? I okay. think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, I talked to Barat about that. But uh, yeah. <laughs> but um, and it's labeled 10.3, but Garth told me it's really 10.4. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. Mm -hmm. I, I seem to recall repairing Hubble Space Telescope was one of the longest uh, space walks. It was very involved because they had to do things that they didn't expect they would have had to do to Hubble. But from your talk, it sounds like they just removed instruments that were there and put in new instruments that had the correction built in. Uh, that's what they did on the instruments, but then they also have other things to do. They replaced gyroscopes, replaced, uh, they, 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 they replaced a lot of the of the thermal shielding on it. Uh, they replaced other expendables, you know, because things wear out. And uh, so. Um, so it wasn't due to the aberration. No, that, that there there was also a uh, they they had trouble every time Hubble would go from the the sun to the dark. The solar panels would do things like this, and it would start bouncing around. So they had to fix the software to fix that, but. Uh, but uh, and they put on new solar panels um, as it as it when it was launched it had uh, silicon these were these were silicon cells 
then they went to gallium arsenide as they ev evolved. But and and of course, when they when they when they capture it, they take time. They have they have to roll these things up, and they carry extras around in case they can't get them unrolled. <laughs> but uh, so and but but they put all kinds of stuff on this. Here you can see the shuttle right here. It's parked in there. One thing, the last servicing mission that I mentioned, they put a fixture on the back end of Hubble so that they can, um, at some point, when everything's wear out, they can send an unmanned rocket up with a rocket engine that will, that by, by remote control, they can attach to that fixture and blast it down into the ocean so it doesn't run into Houston or wherever. But, so there's a number of things they do, and uh, they're, 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 they're limited in the length of time they can be out, and, that it take, and it takes time to get ready to go out, and you know, it, it's a, it's, there's not a lot of air outside there. <laughs> Any other questions? I want to thank I want to thank you all for coming. I I I, I am really pleased at the at the attendance. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm okay. going to hand you this as a okay, thank you. souvenir. Okay. It has uh, first few lines from that volume one, page one oh, paper. Okay. <laughs> 1893. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. thank you very thank much. You, thank, you. Thank, thank you. 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 Thank you very much. Unbelievable. Yeah. Page one, volume one. Page one. Yeah. Thank you.